Hey guys, so here is Luis from Blackforge Games and today I'm going to be teaching you how to install the LIDs on your Tengen. Uh, but before we start, it is important to know the things to do before you prime it. If you want to do corruption effect, you need to put this blue tag on it, right? On the parts that you want to glow in the dark. And the eyes that you can see here, I just put in the eyes, nowhere else. But I did prime not in a good way, as I can see the light was leaking through the helmet. And I do hope you do a better job than I did. And this is how it looks during the night time. It's quite fun, especially if you have a strong LED. And I use for this one two LEDs, and I'm going to show you through this video how to install those. And that's the corruption effect in there. How it's looking, was looking, because now I prime it. I mean, I dry brush it more. So... For the tension, for the LEDs in here, you're going to need at least uh, 40 centimeters long to go through the base hel uh, legs and boost to the hands. And if you're only planning on using LED on the helmet, you're probably going to need only a uh, 30 centimeters uh, LED. And as you can see in the video, uh, after going through each of the uh, legs, I just move on to the boost. It's quite easy this process. And uh, depending on the LED you're using, it might be a little challenging and you might need the help of uh, some pliers. And also make sure that you remove any uh, supports or press support that might be inside your 3D print. Here I go to show how to bend it to help in putting the arm. It I notice it makes the process quite faster and easier, especially if you're using a LED similar to the one I'm using here. And again, I did use a little of the pliers just to help with the locating the exit. I mean, uh, uh, to move around. And also, it's very important before I forget to leave your LEDs on because it helps to identify where they are and how do you need to move them in order for them to reach the, the final destination that would be the hole or the hand on the arm, I mean. And mission accomplished. As you can see, there is a corruption. It's already glowing a little bit with the LED, LED like this. There is a head and yeah, the LED, the light leaking. I'm not happy with that, but again, I suck at priming. And I hope you guys do a better job than I did. <laughs> and for this right arm was quite challenging. And I didn't have this problem before, but maybe before I was lucky. So in this one, I tried different methods to get the LED through the hole. And the first one, of course, was just moving the, bending the light and moving around until you get the the hole in the arm but wasn't working and i tried several times and i almost gave up honestly because i was thinking wow that never happened before but then you know you can always find solutions if you think the problem true so i got this one and i thought ingenious that's gonna work and unfortunately <laughs> it didn't because it was too big to go through the hole with that uh, a metal little thing that I forgot the name now around the LED and I know it's okay this is not gonna work so maybe if I try a blue tech that can happen that can help and I thought that's it and genius that's gonna work and yeah it didn't <laughs> because again the hole was too small for it for the uh, to get the LED through the that space and after a few more failed attempts i had idea of testing another thing which i probably should have thought before <laughs> but just i use a cord from my old hoodie then i just put around the final bit of the led and i pull through the final hole and that's it it worked perfectly i should have started with that Oh well, lesson learned. <laughs> and there you go, Tinjim now has all the LEDs ready for the hands. And again, like I said, it's important to leave the LED on so you can see 
where it is inside the body where you while you're moving it and that's so amber is already looking awesome every time i see this uh, i love it so proud of it because uh, we really want to enhance that effect of he's holding all this power in his hand all these souls and i can't wait to see what you guys come up with it for like color or maybe a, a blinking light or i don't know a corruption a cool corruption right really like the uh, the sky is yours pretty much the limit is the sky i mean sorry and there's a sword so for the sword this led that I'm using is not the ideal because as you can see it's just one point in there and you might have a better effect with the other led that is a constant glow here is how I use to keep the LED compact inside the base. I just go around it with the cable and use a blue tech to stick to the base. Then I also do the same thing with the other one. And I always make sure to leave the switch on and off in a position that can uh, use it whenever uh, no, I want without interfering with the uh, other LED and also that has easy access if possible and here he is Tenjin in his full glory ready for your collection I love this dry brush very proud of it you can see from a few different angles with the LEDs now you can either use a special blinking effect or just leave it on all the time depending on what you want to achieve with your LEDs and painting of course. And we also showcase the Kujiro Ao. It had a few fill bits in there, the formations, but we have corrected already uh, with the press supports and should be ready for you very soon alongside the special base the first one and this is it guys i hope it was helpful and since this was our first video and you know, we're looking forward for any feedback that you guys might have and i thank you for your patience so far because i know it took a while we did have a few priorities before this one and yeah i'm looking forward for to see what you guys are gonna make with your tingin with your lids what effects you're gonna bring to him um, hopefully someone is going to use a cool, like a nice corruption. And yeah, looking forward for your comments. And yeah, hope you have you are all health and safe and that have a good week. Bye.